welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name's Sammy. And on this channel, we do DIYs with signs and there's always tons of laughter. Today is Spotlight Saturday, so I'm sharing my first creator with you. This is somebody you have seen me mention and work with before, but I knew that I needed to share her with you guys because she is so talented amazing personality. I actually hang out with this girl here in Kansas. So you guys, let me introduce you to our next creator. Today we are doing four beautiful home decor projects. My name is Brie. I'm the owner and artist of Upcycled by Brie and I am so excited to be over here on Sammy's channel hanging out with you guys. For project number one, we will be painting these planters. I'm using DIY French Millinery and Prom Queen. DIY paint is a clay-based paint. It is highly pigmented and very thick, which means it is going to provide great coverage. I'm using my Klingon R14 to paint this planter. Now, the concrete planter was okay, but it was a little outdated. The colors weren't great. I knew I could make it a lot prettier. To easily seal these, I grabbed my Rust-Oleum clear matte enamel, took them outside, and gave them a quick coat. But now I want to really highlight the details, so I will be using a DIY shipwrecked wax. I have never used a wax like the DIY wax. It is so smooth and a creamy consistency instead of a liquidy consistency, so it makes applying it so much easier. I applied a generous amount around those details, working in small sections, and then taking a Viva paper towel, I would wipe back the excess and kind of blend it out into the rest of the piece just to make it look more natural. Another thing to notice here, when I'm going and wiping back my wax, it's not pulling the paint off. I put the clear matte enamel on to act as a barrier to help control my wax application, but also to help protect my paint. So for the French millinery pot, I'm doing the same thing, only I'm using the DIY white wax, which is my favorite color by far. Applying it around those beautiful roses, letting it get down in all those little details, and then wiping back the excess. I took a little chip brush and just did a dry brushing over the rest of the pot to highlight all of the details on this one. And I think these are a major improvement. Let's take a look at the final project. Leave me a comment down below. What do you think of my after look on these planters? I love to go thrifting, junking, curbside, finding, garage sailing, estate sailing, you name it, I'm there. I take those finds and then I transform them into beautiful home decor. I really love wood and metal and industrial farmhouse is kind of my jam. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, be sure to head over to my channel when you're done here and hit the subscribe button over there. If you click the bell next to the subscribe button, YouTube will let you know every time we upload new videos. Project number two, we will be taking these table legs I removed from a broken table that I found on the side of the road. We're going to cut them down using my miter saw and turn them into candle stands and risers. Be sure you're wearing your protective equipment and being very cautious whenever you're using power tools. I cut these legs into three different sizes, that way I would have a pair of candlesticks and one riser. Mm -hmm. 
Next step was to sand them down, smooth down each end. I used 120 grit sandpaper on my sander. As you can see, I've got two full sets here. We're going to paint one set today and you're going to have to hop over to my channel to see what I do with set number two. To make the tops and bottoms of these risers, I grabbed a piece of scrap wood, traced around an old paint can and used my jigsaw to cut out my circles. Then I'm using my Sweet Pickens Dark Oil Wax to give them a beautiful stain. The oil wax is a versatile product that you can use to seal up unfinished wood and you can also use it to seal your Sweet Pickens milk paint. Now I'm going to run inside and mix up some milk paint. This is Flower Sack. It is a nice pure white color. I'm doing a half a cup of warm water, half a cup of milk paint, and then I will blend that really well. Now I am adding in some extra bond. This is an additive that's going to help your milk paint adhere to slick surfaces. It is a one part paint to half part bond ratio. I use just a little bit less than that. Gave the candlesticks a quick wipe down with some Dawn dish soap and got to painting with my Klingon F30. Now you can see the milk paint is a thinner consistency than the DIY paint that I use. It did take two coats to cover this and I put them on pretty hastily. I wanted some good texture, some chunks, some um, rough spots that will help create my chipping and crackling when it's time. So here's after one coat, you can see it's pretty splotchy. I'm going on with coat number two, and then I'm going to grab my heat gun to help dry these candlesticks. That is going to force some chipping and crackling. So when I go to sand, I am going to get that beautiful chippy look that we love from our milk paint. As I'm using my sander with some 220 grit sandpaper, you can see where my paint is starting to chip away where I had all of that great crackling. To seal these pieces up, I'm using the Clear Beeswax by Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, and I'm just applying it with a combination of a brush and a rag. And then to really highlight all of those crackles, I'm going in with some of the dark beeswax. It's going to sit down in all of those little divots beautifully and really add some age and patina to these candlesticks. To put them all together, I used a combination of Gorilla Wood Glue and my pneumatic nail gun to attach the top wood rounds to the bases. And here is a look at the final result. What do y'all think? I love the cracking, the chipping of the paint. It looks authentically old and that oil wax was a beautiful match to match the top rounds to the base. Are you going to try these at home? Leave me a comment down below. If you're interested in any of the products I'm using or checking out some of my flips, you'll be able to find all of that stuff over on my website, upcycledbybrie.com, and I'm also on social media, but I'll leave all those links down in the description box below so they're easy for you to find. Now, if you're ready, let's get into the rest of the projects. For project number three, I painted these pieces of scrap wood I had from taking apart an old shelf with that same Sweet Pickens flower sack milk paint. Now using my JRV stencils, we are going to turn them into some old looking antique signage. I'm using DIY black velvet and this stencil is called Duck Red Flower. 
I've got DIY black velvet, which is a beautiful black paint, and I'm using a JRV one inch stencil brush. Now these stencils are made very thick. They're made for retailers so they can be used over and over again. And the brushes have a very compact head on them, which makes them excellent for stenciling. The key is to get a very dry brush. So I'm loading a little bit of paint on and offloading most of that paint over there on a paper towel. Then using a swirling and stippling motion, I get these stencils onto my boards. The second one is a French stamp stencil. And you see, I move these stencils all around and manipulate them to fit onto my piece. They are very versatile. That was DIY's Hey Sailor for that beautiful blue color. Here is a look at the final signs. They look authentically old in my opinion, but I love how you can use these stencils for a very crisp image as well. Be sure to check out my signs collection on my site for all of my upcycled signage. project it is a finish it up project for a friend it is an old window that I sprayed with the Krylon looking glass spray paint and I will link that down in my Amazon store below but it's so easy to use and it provides this mirror effect on the window she requested the frame be painted in DIY aviary which is my absolute favorite green color in the DIY paint line I took two coats for good complete coverage on this piece and then I sealed it up with some DIY clear wax. After two coats of paint I used a razor blade to scrape off the excess paint. Now leave me a comment are you a taper or a scraper? I vacuumed up all the little paint chips and now it's time for the transfer. This is IOD's Painterly Florals Transfer, and I will be using the sunflowers per request. Now, I will leave a link down below so you guys can find a local IOD retailer or somebody who ships near you to get your IOD products. When I'm working with these transfers, I like to cut out my main pieces and lay them out in arrangements to get a feel for how I'd like to apply them. Once you remove them from this paper backing and put them down, they're not coming back off, especially on this glass. They stick super well. Now, the key to a good layout is to keep your transfers pretty close together and don't skimp on the transfers. Use plenty for that nice, beautiful, full image. If you need inspiration, you can always check the IOD's page for lots of beautiful pictures. Once you remove them from the paper backing and laid them down, you need to get the plastic off. So using the little enclosed tool, I'm now rubbing the image down onto the glass while simultaneously lifting the plastic. This method is called riding the wave. You've gotta be kinda of careful not to rip your image, but the more you play with these, the more you will get a good feel for how fast you can lift that plastic. Once the image is on, I take a soft cloth, rub over the top to burnish the image on to my window for good. To seal it up, I've grabbed my clear wax and I'm just using a little chip brush to apply that on the paint. Now, I have not sealed this image on the window, so it is spot clean only unless you take a clear sealer and an artist brush and seal over your transfer. I generally don't do that. I just let my customers know that this window is now spot clean only. Let's take a look here at the final result, and I just love using these transfers on old windows, giving them a new life. Leave me a comment below. Have you ever transformed an old window? Y'all, I had so much fun hanging out with you guys today over here on Sammy's channel. 
I appreciate her so much for giving us the opportunity to hop on and meet y'all. Again, if you liked this video, be sure to head over to my channel, subscribe over there, follow me on social so you don't miss any of my new content. You can check out my website at upcycledbybree.com and I hope to see y'all very soon. Till next time, see you later. Bye friends. I'm eating grass. Stop it. Stop! All right, you guys. So it was Brie from Upcycled by Brie. I hope you enjoyed her content. I want to share people that are, you know, a little bit different than what I might be doing on a daily basis because there is so much talent out there and not everybody gets that kind of exposure. So these are people that I truly, truly love, get inspired by, and want to share with you guys. So help me out, help you, no. All right, y'all, that was Brie from Upcycled by Brie. I hope you loved her DIYs, upcycles. Um, I definitely wanted to introduce you guys to people that might do different things than I usually do on my channel because there is so much creativity out there that needs to be shared. And the people that I'm sharing with you on my channel for Spotlight Saturday are people that I watch that inspire me and that I feel need to be introduced to my community. So make sure you go in the description box. You're gonna click on their next video because they got four more upcycles or DIYs for you to watch today. And make sure to like and subscribe and give them some love. And you guys know too, make sure to like and subscribe because it helps your girl's channel and we still need to reach that 100K, come on. All right, you guys, thank you for being here with us and I will see you again next week, bye. I think I'm just getting rounder and everything is looking weird on me right now. I got this from Savers and I thought it would be cute, but now I'm like, mm. I mean, obviously not with this outfit, you know, but well, that's off it. Whatever. We're going to work with it. Not much fits and I ain't buying anything else. Is it weird? Like my arms are like bigger now. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Nope.